everyone, I'm Anne, and I'm a third year computer science student. And today I'm joined by the one and only Carmen Bruni. Hi everyone. My name is Dr. Carmen Bruni. I am a, a lecturer and advisor in the David R. Cheriton School of Computer Science. Uh, I started at the University of Waterloo in 2015. Great, I'm so excited to be here today. Um, to start off, can you describe what computer science is about? Sure. So. There's a famous quote from Professor Edsker Dijkstra uh, of Dijkstra's algorithm. And it goes, and I'm gonna paraphrase, but it goes something along the lines of, computer science is as much about computers as astronomy is about telescopes. And I think that sentence very much captures what a lot of people think about computer science. For the most part, if you ask somebody, what is computer science? The almost knee-jerk reaction is, oh, well, it's computer programming. It's telling a computer what to do. And in reality, that's really just a small, small section of what computer science really is. Right? Computer science is about models of computation. It's about thinking about what a computer can compute. Um, it's about describing algorithms in step-by-step -step procedures very, very succinctly and in such a way that another person or a computer can understand. It's about taking data and trying to analyze it to make inferences about the future. Um, computer science really is a, a very, very vast field that goes far beyond just com uh, computer programming. Okay, and is there anything that you wish students knew about computer science before choosing it as their major? Yeah, so I'm going to echo a little bit of what I just said, uh, because it is important. Um, computer science really is more than just programming. Uh, there are a lot of theoretical courses that we require our undergraduate students to take in computer science. And a lot of times students resist, you know, they, they don't like them, they don't really see the point. But really, those theoretical computer science courses are, are how this field came to be. Right? It is because of these courses that we now have these computer programming uh, skills and, and skill sets that we can use now to solve complex problems. Um, it, you know, it started as a, a theoretical subject and then transformed into what we have today. So I, I think I would tell new students, you know, computer science is more than just programming and embrace those theoretical computer science courses that will help you long term in your future positions. Okay. Um, I think we've already gotten an idea of this just from the first two minutes, but I'm dying to know what is your favorite aspect of computer science and what's an exciting part of this field? So for me personally, I, I really enjoy computer science just for the opportunities in and of themselves. There's so much out there and you can do so many different things with a computer science degree. There are jobs that exist that you probably have never even heard of that are open to you once you have a computer science degree and more generally a mathematics degree. Um, just as an example, I had a, a friend graduate an applied mathematics degree and he ended up working for a lottery and gaming commission testing slot machines. Now, you don't grow up saying, oh, I'm going to be a slot machine tester. This probably isn't a job that you even knew existed, but it does exist. It is important and you need a theoretical, you know, computer science or theoretical mathematical degree in order to actually be a slot machine tester, for example. Um, so my, my biggest sort of takeaway from computer science and, and what I love about the field is just the endless number of jobs out there and opportunities that you can take once you've, once you've graduated with a computer science degree. Uh, it, it's just fantastic. What are the different kinds of careers that can be pursued after a computer science degree? Sure. So there's a lot of different career paths that you can obtain once you have a computer science degree. There's things like graphics designers, data scientists, um, web developers, computer programmers, software engineers. Um, I mean, you can even be a professor, right? <laughs> Clearly, that's been a fun and a fruitful job for myself, right? So there are a lot of opportunities out there once you have a computer science degree. But maybe even more generally, there are a lot of opportunities that you might not believe that you're even qualified for until you actually start looking and you say, oh, wow, like these big financial firms, for example, they need a lot of computer programmers to make the world go around, right? You know, you need to have a lot of technical computer science expertise. The, the business side you can pick up when you're there, but uh, the technical skills that you need to do all the programming aspects, those are the things that you can obtain in a, in a computer science degree. So uh, there are a lot of opportunities out there that you might not know about or you might not be aware of uh, that only become known to you once you um, once you start looking for, for a job. OK, 
Okay. So the possibilities are endless, is what you're saying? <laughs> they really are, yeah. Like, there's just so many opportunities. I mean, again, I, I can't name everything because there just really are a lot of different jobs out there. Um, but like the main ones that I sort of mentioned, data scientist, software engineer, uh, graphics designer, web developer, these are sort of like the big umbrella ones. And then once you have these big umbrella ideas, then from there you can whittle down the ones that you, uh, you know, you, you can narrow down your search to find a specific job that you really, really are interested in, a specific field that you really, really like. So maybe I'll, I'll add to this end. One, one thing that you can also do is, you know, pairing your computer science degree with something else is a, a very big boon. So when I was an undergrad, much like yourself, I actually graduated from the University of Waterloo. And my degrees are in computer science and pure mathematics. And I managed to take those two things and, and do a PhD in computational number theory, something that is both very theoretical and very heavily reliant on, on using a computer to solve problems. So, um, you know, this marrying of computer science with something else is also another fruitful way to go. Um, and it might open up new avenues that I, I have no idea about, right? So. Um, and how does computer science differ from other programs that you mentioned earlier, like data science or computational math? Sure. So data science is always one of my favorite. I have a, a common adage for data science. Data science is sort of what happens when computer science and statistics have a baby. And that baby that they give birth to is data science, basically. So a data scientist has to use a lot of techniques from computer science but also needs to use a lot of the statistical elements from statistics in order to um, make inferences about data. So data science really is a combination of computer science and statistics. So if one of those two things doesn't really appeal to you, I would not recommend a data science degree. However, if you love crunching numbers, if you love dealing with large data sets, uh, if you love programming, if you love analyzing data, that's definitely the path I would recommend. Computational mathematics, on the other hand, that's a that's a much different sort of beast, and I think it little it partly depends on who you ask. So, computational mathematics, to me, when I think of it, I think of things like floating point arithmetic and actually using a computer to solve or at least approximate a solution to a very difficult mathematical problem. So, things that come to mind are um, typically in the applied mathematics field. Um, so things like trying to solve a differential equation. This is very difficult to do theoretically. But computationally, you can often get approximations to differential equations by using a computer to help you out. And then you can run simulations on parameters to try to, to figure out sort of the best model for your situation. So something that's very, uh, very hot right now, right, is pandemic, um, pandemic disease discussions, right? So using a computer to help model what a pandemic is going to look like is sort of what I would think of as computational mathematics. So a little bit of computer science, but also a little bit of hardcore difficult, you know, applied and theoretical mathematics coming in. Okay, thank you so much, Carmen. That was really insightful and we got a really good overview of computer science as well as some related programs. So thank you, that was really great. <laughs>